Hi friends and new friends. Dash has been doing pretty well recently from both from a technological and market standpoint. Releases like, such as Chainlocks and the Dash platform have gained accolades in the, the wider crypto community and have led to significant price increases. What's going on? Well, the recent Dash Core Group quarterly call holds a lot of the keys to the answers to all that, and we're going to go over it today. You're going to get a sense of what's going on in Dash and why people are so excited. I'm Christopher Carruthers, also known as Tao of Satoshi, and you're watching Cash Alternative TV. So what is Cash Alternative TV other than that catchy jingle? Well, it's a show about digital currency with a focus on Dash, which aims to be a digital cash for the world, an alternative to cash. If that's something that interests you, you want to learn more about Dash or just want to hang out with me some more, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss an episode. Now on to the topic of today's show. So the Dash Core Group quarterly call is a quarterly update every three months that uh, the Dash Core Group does for the Dash community. Just uh, updates it on what's been going on and the, tech, the, pro the processes that have been happening and the technological developments. Today I'm going to go through this call, I'm going to offer you the highlights and I'm going to offer you my comments and, and uh, opinions along the way. Let's do it. So Ryan starts off the call with explaining what exactly Dash is. Our goal is to provide a greater degree of financial freedom for everyone by providing the world with better money. Our brand identity continues to focus on the individual with your money, your way, really highlighting the benefits of Dash. We're targeting individuals, businesses, and developers by addressing problems we see in the payments industry that cryptocurrency and Dash's speed in particular can address. We attract those users with a borderless, fast, inexpensive, secure, and easy to use payment network. We feature instant payments for under one US cent with enhanced user security and privacy. These features make Dash ideal for both online and point of sale purchases. The Dash network consists of many components, including the currency itself, which is used to facilitate payments and the network upon which users interact. And with the upcoming release of Dash platform, we're working towards greater flexibility for developers by introducing the ability to easily integrate applications and build applications designed for use on the Dash network. We believe these are components necessary to compete within the payments industry and deliver value to our users. Yes, Dash currently features industry-leading technology with fast, secure, and optionally private transactions, leading to silky smooth experience for users. But in the future, this experience is going to be even more enhanced with an easy-to-use experience that mimics PayPal and Venmo, only in a decentralized format. How do we accomplish this? Well, it's known as Dash Platform, previously known as Evolution, and Ryan gets you up to speed on the initial developments here. During this quarter, we released the first components of Dash Platform to Testnet. Dash Platform is the primary component upon which all other Evolution features will be built. It has been designed in such a way that it's easily extensible and flexible, allowing Dash Core Group or any third party to build decentralized applications and enhanced payment functionality. Because of dependencies, we need to release Dash Platform first, and the network must migrate to that version before we can introduce applications uh, to run on Dash Platform, including Dash Pay. Dash Platform will add application storage and a decentralized API to the network. And once migration to Dash Platform is complete on mainnet, we'll introduce the first application. Dash Pay will allow users to register a unique network-wide username, create contact lists, create a profile, and transact with other users in an easy-to-use fashion similar to Venmo or Cash App. Dash Platform will also enable developers to start building applications for merchants and consumers, including applications that can interact with Dash Pay. Merchant-facing applications will introduce new capabilities that address their unique needs, multi-party access, ability to uh, request profile information such as shipping address from customers, or the ability to issue an invoice through the Dash network. Yeah, it's crazy the things that Dash Platform can do, all in a decentralized way. I guess that's what the market's picking up on. I'm really excited to see the future potential of Dash Platform. What else can it do? In the future, we'll introduce additional applications, uh, perhaps an offers application, 
uh, or others uh, that allow merchants to interact with uh, the consumers uh, that follow them. Uh, we also will have the ability to um, forward offers, rewards. Um, we can't wait to see what other developers will build or how they will uh, take our reference applications and enhance them in some way um, in order to better see uh, uh, serve the market. Yes, if you're a blockchain developer or you know someone who is possibly working on Ethereum or EOS or something like that, send them our way. Send them to that website and get in on the ground floor of an historic project. But you know, a great network and technology is all well and good, but if we don't have users, it's kind of pointless, right? So what is Dash Core Group doing to grow the Dash network and getting more users over time? Our growth strategy consists not only on a great product that puts users first, but also consists of credible paths to growth in a variety of markets, which we believe are the best fit for cryptocurrency and Dash in particular. Q4 was the first full quarter that we had chain locks and chained instant send live on the network. With these new capabilities, the network is now delivering a user experience and security level that's unmatched by other cryptocurrency networks. Traders and users have taken notice, and there's been a lot of traction getting commitments from exchanges and other services to integrate chain locks and instant send. We'll talk about some examples of those, and we've got more in, in the pipeline. Yes, if you're watching this, I encourage you to download a wallet and try doing Dash transactions with your friends. Chainlocks and Instance Send makes Dash transactions a step above the competition. So you may have heard that Dash is doing very well in Venezuela as far as adoption goes. So what is it that makes Dash and Venezuela a perfect fit for each other? The markets we're targeting are those with the greatest need and greatest fit for cryptocurrency and Dash, especially due to our unique features, such as instantly confirmed transactions. Prime example here is Venezuela, where we're proving to be a great market uh, for us, um, not only because of the hyperinflation, but because we're solving practical limitations of the local payment systems. Um, having teams on the ground there um, and a Venezuelan on our business development team uh, really helps us understand the needs beyond just you know, the inflation issue. Over 80% of Venezuelans have a deep skepticism for government-issued currency, and we're seeing a lack of low denomination bills and smaller change. Um, and so there's a lot of friction in those transactions, even the ones that are occurring in dollars, as uh, merchants may not have change. They could either forego a sale or force the consumer to buy say $20 worth of goods when they only wanted to buy 10. And so there's a lot of friction for both the consumer and the merchant um, in those. And Dash really stands out as a solution that eliminates that type of friction. Merchants just, uh, I think, love the simplicity of accepting Dash transactions. We've seen videos with interviews with merchants that accept Dash um, that express uh, great gratitude for, for having the option available. Yes, here's to a long-lasting Dash partnership with Venezuela. It would be cool if Dash was responsible for getting the country its swagger back, because I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Uh, Venezuela used to be one of the most economically prosperous countries in Latin America. And if Dash could be responsible for getting its swagger back, that would be just too cool. Another use case for Dash is crypto trading. Find out what Dash is doing in this industry in this next clip. In terms of crypto trading, we're seeing improvement in the movement of value between exchanges using our instant send technology. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in both chain locks and instant send ever since Coinbase integrated Dash and included chain locks in their integration. Uh, we've done some analysis and have determined that Dash, although we're ranked 15th currently in coin market cap, uh, we're consistently in the top 10 for market volume. Um, on any of the exchanges that we're integrated in. Uh, and there's anecdotal evidence that traders are beginning to really take notice of Dash. Um, we received several inquiries during the quarter um, from major market making or, or institutional service or, uh, organizations that were looking to borrow large sums of Dash um, in order to lend them to traders. Traders definitely recognize the value of utilizing Dash 
in order to facilitate trades, move value between exchanges, take advantage of arbitrage opportunities. I think we're seeing anecdotal evidence that the network effects of more and more exchanges accepting instant send deposits or chain lock deposits is having an effect. Um, and I think we're capturing some market share from other coins that uh, historically have fulfilled the fast transfers of, of value between exchanges. Yeah, I really can't wait for the day that uh, all exchanges implement instant send and you can just do ping pong back and forth between them and Dash becomes the, tra the trading uh, currency of choice for traders and uh, they'll be able to take advantage of market trends in between exchanges, arbitrage and opportunities such as that. That's the future I envision and the future that other exchanges such as Whitebit that I did a recent interview with, they also uh, share that vision too. So it would be pretty cool if that actually happens in the future, so we'll pay attention. What other industries is Dash really well suited for? Ryan tells us in this next clip. Uh, in terms of remittances, um, those are primarily focused in the Latin America market, given the size of the market and synergies with the Venezuelan use case. Uh, we've managed to stand up a number of remittance partners now that the exchanges uh, are in place in some of the countries that we're targeting. We now have two exchanges in Mexico uh, with fiat pairs. Uh, one of those is being used for incoming uh, remittances. The other is being used for outgoing remittances. And so uh, we'll continue to build out that infrastructure in other countries. And as we do that, we're able to take the next steps with the remittance strategy. Yeah, sending money home to loved ones is about to get easier. You can send from phone to phone at any time of day and, and, it, and it's very low fees. So Dash is also very well suited for remittances. He's right about that. And Dash has also begun to make inroads in the gaming market. Find out more about that here. Uh, what we've done is we've engaged with ga gaming companies in order to better assess their needs, understand their pain points, understand how the market works. We've done that through interviews. We've done that through uh, conversations with payment processors that serve the industry. Um, we've already been integrated into dozens of gaming sites. And so, uh, and, and not only that, but Dash is frequently differentiated on those platforms as the fastest deposit method. So it seemed to be getting natural traction. There is value in sports betting because of the timing issue of those bets. Um, and so that portion of what we're looking at, we think remains viable. Uh, so we're continuing to research the market and determine whether uh, this is an area we should invest in um, or whether we should use our resources to double down on the other strategies with our, our limited bandwidth. Yeah, I personally think that Dash would be a good fit in both the gaming and video gaming market. I can't wait to see what developers from those industries can do with Dash transactions. So what companies have taken on Dash and integrated it into their systems in the, re in the last quarter? Ryan's glad you asked. In Venezuela, we announced Burger King uh, as an integration at the end of December. Uh, CryptoBuyer's solution is the one that's uh, being deployed to uh, Burger King. Um, and it's being tested currently at one location. The testing is going well. Uh, and I believe that the uh, client is very happy with it. And so that will be deployed to all 40 locations uh, shortly. It's uh, on initial launch. Dash will be exclusive for a couple of months before other cryptocurrencies on CryptoVirus platform will be available. And so we'll, we'll get a head start on availability within uh, Burger King compared to, to many of the other currencies that, uh, that are on that platform. Uh, we also uh, attended the Latin American Bitcoin conference where there's a growing awareness of Dash throughout the region. We, we were pleasantly surprised. Um, and we were able to make connections to a number of new potential partners, uh, including exchanges and liquidity providers that can ex assist with our expansion of our infrastructure within the region. We also continue to encourage uh, growth with our existing partners. We do that through um, joint activities. In, in one such example, we held a Black Friday promotion, and you see the uh, logo for that right there. Uh, that we ran in partnership with Church's Chicken. And so with, with many of these headline type of integrations, um, you know, making that very publicly uh, viewable has, has really helped with our, our branding. 
Uh, lastly, in the fourth quarter, uh, Dash was integrated into uh, the initial launch of Venezuela's first crypto ATM back in October. Um, so that was really a mo milestone moment. Um, prior to that, you know, the legality of these things were uh, kind of in question. And so a, a number of different uh, ATM operators are now functioning there. It seems like uh, this is a new service type that is available to grow. There are already, as I said, several other ATMs in the country and uh, Dash is being integrated into all of those integrations, just given our prominence there. Um, on the trading front, uh, we were added to Indodax, uh, which is the leading uh, exchange in Indonesia with a uh, rupia trading pair, uh, the fiat currency in India or in uh, uh, Indonesia. And that's another exchange that, that supports instant send deposits. Um, we are exploring how the combination of a fiat pair and instant send can be leveraged to enable a remittance solution for, for Indonesia, as we've done with uh, the infrastructure that we added in Mexico. And so um, this is a very large uh, remittance market in Asia, and um, you know, we think that there are opportunities to build that out. VCC is a Vietnamese exchange uh, that added Dash. We're currently working with them to add a fiat trading pair and instant send capabilities. Um, so, you know, the integration came first, but we'll continue to, to try to expand uh, our capabilities there. Current pairs include BTC, USDT, and Ethereum. And so um, hopefully we can get a, a fiat pair added there soon. Gate.io is a Chinese exchange that already had Dash listed, but uh, you know, I, I think that China is a market that um, uh, awareness of Dash is probably lower than, than most other geographies. And there we held an AMA that was very well attended by, by Gate.io uh, users and um, uh, you know, several hundred uh, traders and investors joined uh, for that AMA um, with the aim of driving awareness for Dash. Um, that's the type of activity that we'd like to do more uh, with existing partners in order to help kind of take advantage of the infrastructure that's already there. Um, and then Cointrade, that's a new Brazilian exchange with a fiat pair um, that was brought in by the Dash Brazil team. Uh, Dash Core Group's role was to work with um, Coin, uh, Cointrade in order to uh, enable instant send on the platform. So at this point, Dash is now integrated into all four of the most important exchanges serving the Brazilian market. And um, it really has been a, a strong market for us and, um, of course, complements our remittance strategy and our Venezuela strategy because of the migration that's happened uh, with Venezuelans moving to other Latin American countries. Uh, next up is Abra. Uh, Abra is a trading platform focused on ease of use. Um, it allows for uh, connections in a large number of countries. Um, and then BBOD, this is a zero fee futures exchange. And what they're bringing to the table, they've launched the world's first Dash perpetual futures quoted and settled in TUSD. That's a uh, USD stable coin. The new derivative contract is now trading on BBOD with up to 25 times leverage. Um, in, in our remittance, uh, category. We held a meetup in Argentina to identify potential partners in fiat on-ramps in the country. We held a meeting um, and contacted all of the major exchanges and, and other service providers in the country. We had about 25 attendees, spoke to exchange general managers, remittance company operators, uh, OTC uh, trading teams, and potential Dash uh, community organizers in the country. And so we hope to close on some of those opportunities in the first two quarters of 2020 uh, and expand our presence into Argentina. That, of course, is also uh, a major remittance corridor back to Venezuela. 
Um, and as a follow-up of enabling the Dash Mexican peso pair, uh, Cubabit and, and Dash Mexico worked together to deploy Remizaza, which is a remittance solution um, and provides a cash out option for remit receiving remittances into Mexico. Um, as I mentioned, that effort was spearheaded by Dash Mexico team and uh, took advantage of the infrastructure that Dash Core Group had uh, uh, built with the Cubabit exchange. And finally, uh, we have CryptoWorth. Uh, it, it's an accounting platform and services that are specifically for cryptocurrencies. Uh, integration into services like these don't tie into any one strategy, but they're certainly important for any of these businesses uh, to have options and services <coughs> to be able to adopt Dash with less friction. And CryptoWorth is, is one of the ways that we're doing that. That's a question we often get is how can I uh, use uh, accounting services and things. So it sounds like it's an impressive quarter, but Ryan mentions he has more in the pipeline. I'll be sure to cover it, so pay attention to Cash Alternative TV in the future where we'll see the new integrations that Dash brings on board. Very exciting times. So in the Dash quarterly call, Ryan also shows the metrics of how the Dash network's been doing. So that's what we're going to do in this next clip. Overall, uh, on a lot of the market uh, metrics that we tracked, uh, Dash did quite well. In terms of usage, we saw higher active addresses per day. Uh, higher average number of transactions per day, uh, looking at the median, more active wallets being installed. In fact, we saw 50% growth in active mobile wallets. We saw uh, a greater number of addresses with balances over a dollar. We also saw an increase in exchange volume being reported. Payment volume was down, mostly due to the, the price being down, and the number of economic transactions, although those shrunk, that's mostly due to the effects of prior quarter stress tests that uh, didn't take place in Q4. Yeah, those are pretty impressive numbers, considering we were in the depths of a bear market. And how do those numbers compare to other crypto projects? When I compare Dash to what's happening across the industry, it was a particularly strong quarter, because what we saw in all the metrics we looked at was that uh, Bitcoin's on-chain number of transactions were shrinking, as was Bitcoin Cash's, Litecoin's, the Lightning Network capacity shrank, whether you look at active uh, or unique open channels. Um, I think we're seeing a lack of adoption of the Lightning Network. If, if it were being adopted and used, I think everyone would know it by now. And so overall, Dash was growing in a market that was difficult for, for everybody else. So Dash has been faring really well in comparison to its competitors. So how are all those users using Dash? Well, it starts with the mobile wallet, which we're going to take a look at here. So it was a great quarter across the board. If we uh, look down the, the left-hand column, uh, the first column is for in each of the groups that I think are monumental and set us on, our, on the, a good path for 2020. In the uh, mobile team, we were able to continue our work after announcing a, a strategy definition, uh, kind of more focused strategy in the previous quarter. We were able to work on un making a uniform user experience across both Android and uh, iOS. That included pushing our iOS release into, uh, into beta in the fourth quarter and uh, really enhancing the design to tie in the new branding and uh, improve other, other areas of uh, user experience. As we move into this first quarter on the mobile team, we've now released uh, fully in production iOS v4, so a major release that was released a couple of weeks ago and uh, have uh, continued to upgrade, update that as needed. And uh, so this quarter we'll look forward to uh, production release of uh, the next major version which includes that uniform UX and, and redesign. And uh, yet the work also continues in, uh, in earnest on Dash Pay, which is the next version of the wallet, which would include support for uh, identities, uh, contact lists, and we'll look forward this quarter to uh, a de working demo of that. So I'm looking forward to the day where the Dash Pay wallets are fully running on the decentralized API, and we can access them from anywhere. So how's the Dash platform going, Bob? 
In the, the fourth quarter for the platform team, we had uh, set a goal to deliver a, a test net version of the basic components for accessibility, uh, DAPI, uh, Drive, and, uh, and other functionality. That was met uh, right at the end of the quarter as, as we targeted. In this quarter, we'll continue to deliver incremental releases of, uh, of what we're calling EvoNet, which again is a public test net. So with EvoNet, we'll continue to have releases this quarter. As far as Dash Core goes, uh, it may not be represented on the slide, but we did have two uh, maintenance or point releases in Dash Core 0.15 on mainnet. Uh, most of those were in reaction, very swift reaction to some security concerns with some Bitcoin vulnerabilities that were introduced. We also did some, uh, some cleanup along the way as we had those point releases as there were some things that we felt could add some value on uh, private send and some other optimizations that were, were happening. The majority of the work though was on getting 0 0.15 to, uh, to testnet. And then a significant amount of effort uh, in just catching up on syncing with Bitcoin backports. And so we were able to get up through the entire code stream of Bitcoin version 0 0.15 in our release to testnet. Some of our future enhancements for core will be centered around, uh, really split into two groups, I would call it. One is support for platform features. So as we need to um, handle some of the capabilities of Dash platform, there will be some core dependencies on that. And so that will enter into the uh, scope of work for the core team, as well as whatever outcomes uh, happen from our store of value discussions that we're having. So it looks like the Dash platform and other areas of Dash are going well, but over time developers will be needed. So what exactly could developers help us out with? If you're a developer, what should you be looking for in Dash and how can you help us out? Uh, all of the features that we had committed to upfront as far as distributed uh, decentralized storage, aka Drive, as we had called it for quite some time, the access to that data via our decentralized API or DAPI, the ability to uh, register identities. We have over a thousand identities, uh, usernames registered at this point into that push against it, and, uh, and as well as the uh, SDK. So now that we have the basic components out there working, obviously it's, uh, it's in development still, and so we need to set proper expectations with the development community of what still needs to be developed and delivered and uh, in what order on that. But this is really just kind of the buckets of work that still need to, need to take place, and uh, a big portion of that is around securing the platform. So how can things be done in a secure fashion? How is signing going to happen as far as, uh, as far as data goes between nodes? And uh, so a ton of work that needs to happen around securing. We also need to uh, build in all the incentivization. Uh, how are fees going to be calculated? How are rewards going to be calculated and distributed? And um, you know, other things like recovery mechanisms for, for identities and, and how does all of that work with proof of service on, um, on layer two or the platform. Another uh, body of work also is around resiliency. So we're off to a great start. We would encourage anybody in any uh, developers in the community to reach out uh, to Dana as our uh, product manager on this to engage in the conversation uh, and uh, continue to provide us input and, and push on this. So we're excited about that. So there's still quite a bit of work to do. Nothing worth doing comes easy, am I right? But the future of Dash does look pretty bright. Take a look at these design mockups of some mobile wallets here. So on the left-hand side, uh, a screenshot is really a homepage. It has quick actions uh, for buying and selling and, and uh, scanning as you're interacting with other users. So we love the UI, I think it's been a lot of excitement generated internally as we've gone through this process. The second uh, screenshot is representative as a notification after a username's been uh, registered or uh, on the, the Dash network. Third one is the contact list separating in between uh, contact requests that, are, that have come in, ability to quickly uh, handle those as well as separated from uh, overall contact lists that can be easily scrolled through to find those who you'll be paying or receiving from. 
And the last screenshot is uh, so a drill down, uh, for instance, once this contact that was in the contact request now becomes an actual contact in your contact list and you interact with them, you'll be able to quickly see the history and, uh, and interact with them directly sending and requesting. So we're excited about these. As I mentioned before, we'll look to this quarter as an opportunity to perform uh, a Dash Pay demo, which would be against EvoNet, which would be combining these designs and seeing it in a working fashion. So look forward to that. Looking good. Adding Dash's industry-leading transactions and back end to this UI experience in the front end from Dash Platform is going to result in a very competitive project indeed. So how can you f help us out? Well, here's the website that developers are going to be using to go interact with Dash Platform and uh, make, make adjustments to it as needed. We have created what uh, we are referring to as our developer portal, which can be accessed at dash.org slash developers. And this should be quick access and really your first stop uh, if you're in the development community to find out what we're doing with the project, how you can get involved, as well as getting into uh, documentation or getting into the repos directly. This screenshot on the right is our live documentation. Uh, as you uh, click through from the portal to the documentation, there's two sides of this. One is uh, the Dash platform documentation, which supports our testnet release, which we'll keep up to date. And uh, it's in a searchable, uh, very usable, and uh, collaborative environment. Uh, we're within a, a content uh, management platform that will actually allow, and we are uh, requesting feedback and uh, participation from our community. So by logging in, making changes, i.e. comments uh, or suggested changes directly in the text. Those will be sent to our uh, documentation team for review and approval, and we can easily accept those and we can incorporate your changes uh, with the uh, click of a button. So we're very excited about the flexibility and power that that provides. We're also very uh, excited about the level of documentation that's there to support this first EvoNet release of uh, Dash platform. The other side of the documentation site is the Dash core documentation. So all of it has been migrated in preparation for the V15 mainnet release. So any uh, maintenance releases, uh, dot releases, or major releases from this point forward will only be on, uh, uh, those changes will only be made on the new documentation site. So those were all the things that were going on in Dash in this quarterly call, which featured quite a lot of information and gave you a sense of why people are excited about Dash. Stay tuned to this channel for more information and more news about Dash as it comes up. It's an alternative to cash, wanting to be a digital cash for the world, and we're quite excited to have you with us. Well, that's it for me today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and click the bell if you want to see more from me and Cash Alternative TV episodes. Until next time, remember, Dash is a better money for a better future, and that future is getting closer every day. Bye for now.